Hey what is up guys it is me ETG and welcome to my list on my top 5 favorite horror games. Now this is something I've wanted to do for a while now and now the spooky month has rolled around I figured now is a better time than ever to do it. However I do have to put a spoiler warning in effect as I will be showing late game footage from all games I'll be talking about. I won't be going into any plot details, but there will be in-game footage, so if you don't want any spoilers, please click off this video now, or just listen to it without watching the screen. Not necessarily ideal, but, you know, whatever works. Tattletale is a horror game that takes place in Christmas of 1998 where you must fend yourself off from a Furby-like creature known as Mama Tattletale. Well you also have a Tattletale of your own which you got as a Christmas present that you decided to open early. Which you probably shouldn't have done. What kid would want this toy anyways? It's so loud and annoying and never shuts up. Hey, at least he's cute though. Tattletale certainly isn't the scariest game out there, but can get pretty tense when Mama gets close. Also, I won't lie when I say the jump scare has made my heart skip a beat before, even if the jump scare itself isn't all too scary. Oh, and did I mention that Night 5 is bullcrap? I won't go into any detail as to why, but if you've played this game before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The game also looks pretty good for a game made in such a short amount of time. The sound design is also good, even though I'm pretty sure according to their website, just about every sound in the game was either a free stock sound effect or a purchasable stock sound effect. This game is also incredibly short. Even your first time through, as according to the website, how long to beat, most people beat the game in within an hour to an hour and a half. And while this game is short, this was supposedly done on purpose as in an interview with the creators, they wanted it to be a game students could play during Christmas break and have one person play and then pass it on to the next person, which if you ask me, is pretty cool. It's not the best horror game out there, far from it in fact, but for what it sets out to do, I think it does really well. Oh, and one final thing about this game is the scariest part is when Mama appears right in front of you. <laughs> Mama scary. Little Nightmares is awesome. I just finished this game very recently, but it quickly became one of my favorites. For a long time I've been looking for a horror game that gets the perfect mix of platforming and horror, and this game finally did that for me. I don't think a game has ever been able to make me feel so tense but awesome at the same time. Every time I climbed to escape an enemy or slid into a vent, it felt amazing. And the game knows this too, as there is even a few moments in the game where jumping or sliding at the last second is required to escape. The game also managed to hit that perfect spot for me in the puzzle department, where the puzzles weren't too difficult, but just difficult enough to where I did have to think for a few minutes to solve it. The puzzles all have this sort of aha moments to them, which means every time I completed a puzzle, I felt cool. For two seconds. Little Nightmares also hit that perfect spot for me when it came to the scariness factor, as I thought this game wouldn't be scary at all, but I felt surprisingly tense when being chased. It also doesn't rely on jump scares too often. Like, at all. I can really only think of three moments in the game that were scripted jump scares, and hearing the chef scream when he sees you is terrifying. He also does it when you use elevators, which is even scarier knowing as soon as the elevator reaches the top floor again, he's coming for you. 
Little Nightmares also feels a lot like if one of those Little Big Planet 3 horror levels was more fleshed out and longer and the controls were smoother, which is a good thing. Even being chased around by the enemies reminded me a lot of Little Big Planet 3. Jeff? See? Jeff! He's upstairs, guys! I'm trying to jump out of the house! <laughs> no! Jeff, don't do it! Guys, I'm gonna go. Jeff, Jeff, think about this. Jeff, just, just, do you wanna do it? Okay? I could bring you ice cream and cookies. Sick man, Jeff, don't He's do docile. It. I have him docile. Sugar. No, it's funny! You just undociled him! <laughs> no! <laughs> That's right, my number 3 pick is indeed Sister Location from the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. I won't lie, I'm not a big fan of FNAF anymore, but when this game came out, I was hyped and it still holds a special place in my heart. This is a game where it's mostly all the smaller details that really make this game awesome to me. Like for instance, every animatronic has their own unique jump scare sound or how you can actually pick up on very small hints via rare blueprints that sometimes appear when you start up the game, which implies that not only were these animatronics made specifically for capturing children, but also that the animatronic you were talking to maybe actually wasn't baby. Also, the models for this game look fantastic. Not just the animatronics, but the environment around you too. Scott actually took over a year after the fourth game's release to push out Sister Location, which means he probably had more time to work on the models. Oh, and the animatronics animations are also extremely well done. Initially, I thought it was weird how smoothly they moved, but apparently, according to one of the books, the animatronics in this game were actually made by a different person, and unlike the other animatronics, these didn't have joints to stop them from doing things humans couldn't do, hence their smoother movement, which once again, is a small detail that I love. The sound design in this game was done by Leon Riskin, who also did the soundtrack for FNAF World. There isn't much music in this game, but the music that is there is great. Interestingly enough, you never actually see an in-game model of Baby outside of the title screen all but once, making it feel as if she's more of a presence rather than an entity, which is creepy. I mean, you hear her voice all the time, but only ever see her once, which, once again, means that maybe it's not Baby who was speaking to you this whole time. The Funtime Foxy section can also go die in a hole. Not because it's difficult, no 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 no, it's because it's too freaking scary. Also, we are not even going to speak of Night 4, due to the fact that Night 4 actually sent me into a panic attack multiple times. And no, I'm not joking. The idea of having the faceplates pop open for a jump scare was actually really cool. At first I thought it was just kind of weird as I didn't really see a reason for them to have faceplates other than to add something new to the jump scares until it occurred to me that the reason they have faceplates is for easier access to the endoskeleton when they need repairs, which is something you actually have to do in this game. Also the little segments that play when you're at home, they're great. Clara, the baby isn't mine. It is Vlad. They had trouble catching him in the nursery today. So what? Lots of kids get hyper and run around and stuff. They had to knock him out of the air with a broom. I have to go. They're going to dock your paychecks. They can't do that. I'm a vampire. I don't get paychecks. You work the graveyard shift at the Fry Me Taco. Don't lie to me. <laughs> love Dark Deception. I honestly didn't think much of it back when Chapter 1 first released as I thought it felt a little 
feel too similar to The Joy of Creation Reborn, and I was initially worried that the later chapters wasn't very enough. But thankfully, I was wrong. This game may look and play like Pac-Man, but it actually has its own unique world and story, and while we aren't too sure what that story is 100% yet, as only three chapters are out as of the writing of the script, from what we have seen, it looks very interesting. The enemies not only all look unique, but all have their own ways of chasing you down. The monkeys just chase you, but Agatha can teleport, the gold watchers move when you're not looking, and the dread duckies just sit there until you get too close. And then they spring up on two legs and kill you! The game also has multiple abilities for you to unlock that can not only aid you in the chapter you unlock them in, but can also be useful for when you want to go back to a previous chapter to get a higher rank. The Steam page also likes to use the fact that there is no hiding in this game as a marketing technique. And yeah, this game legit gives you no breathing room, and you have to constantly be running when the enemies are on the hunt. In fact, the only level you don't have to be constantly running in is Stranger Sewers, where you have to get close to the Dread Duckies in order for them to start chasing you, as said earlier. This game was also made in the Unreal Engine 4, and this game looks fantastic. This game looks like something a AAA company would put out, and it's stunning an indie team made this game. I don't think I've seen an indie horror game that looked this good since Outlast 2. I will admit, I think the bloom looks a little too strong in Crazy Carnival, but other than that, the game looks amazing. Even when playing this game on lower graphic settings, it looks good, which in all honesty is probably because they haven't added that many graphical options. What about the enemy designs though? Well, they're all well done so far. The monkeys, from what I can tell, are based Going off back those to the old gameplay symbol monkeys. This game Agatha will make your a bit typical, but her like freaky crazy. long fingers when make you finally up for see it. You, the U escape the gold screen, watchers, you feel more relieved than you well, they probably look about as ever creepy will as a statue horror get. game. The dread duckies. And the clowns. Eh, honestly, just a bit typical. If I were to say my biggest problem with this game, it would be that it feels like some levels have too many soul shards just to pad out the game a bit. But most of the levels have good amounts. Most of them. And yes, all of the jump scare animations look great. <laughs> And now, my number one favorite horror game is... This game. Bendy and the Ink Machine is so dang good and I love it to death. Now, is it the scariest horror game out there? <laughs> Is the gameplay shallow? 100%. But that doesn't matter, because this game is so well crafted. I will be separating this game into different sections, because if I didn't, it would be all over the place. So, live with it, I guess. I don't even know what I'm saying. This part even isn't even in the script, by the way. I'm going completely off script for a second. Moving on. I suppose we should start with the graphics and art style. This game certainly does not have the greatest looking graphics out there, but they do look really good nonetheless. And even if the graphics don't look perfect, they don't need to because this game's art style is extremely well done, and it's probably the most unique looking horror game in years. According to the creator, The Meatly, his mindset when creating the art style was he wanted it to make it look like you're walking through his sketch which explains why the game is sepia-toned and not black and white. Everything has the perfect mix of textures and 3D, enough textures to where the game looks like you were inside a sketch, but also enough depth to where it doesn't feel like as if they were like, oh, it's a sketch, so everything can just be textured. And this art style seems to be even closer to perfection with the Bendy and the Dark Revival trailer we saw earlier this year. 
Next, let's look at the story. Ha, just kidding, we're not going into the story as I don't want to spoil it, so let's just move on to the gameplay. The gameplay, like I said, is pretty shallow, and you'll mostly be walking around, occasionally fighting off enemies, solving puzzles, and looking for items. This game does have some stealth sections in it, but unfortunately doesn't implement any mechanics to it to make it more fluid, like peeking or crouching. But luckily the game doesn't have too many stealth sections and at least two of them manage to work somewhat well. The game in my opinion though is mostly about soaking in the atmosphere so I don't think it needs deep gameplay. So other than the missing stealth mechanics the gameplay is all around pretty good. Now the times the game is scary, the scares that are in the game are usually very well done and aren't too over the top. Look at you ultimate custom knight. Sometimes in chapter 3, Bendy will just show up as this is the only chapter where he freely roams the map, and the sound of the music kicking in out of nowhere will probably make your heart skip a couple beats. And the sound design is so dang good. Like sometimes you can just walk up to an object like a desk and hear things like paper rustling. There is also random creaks from time to time which keeps you paranoid. Oh yeah, and the voice acting is actually very well done for an AD team's first game, and I'm assuming most of, if not all of the voice actors have had experience with voice acting before. Bendy and the Ink Machine will always have a special place in my heart, even if another game takes the number one spot someday. And the final thing I'll say about this game is... Dream too big and you will fall. Mm.